resist the I love precious my, bear. He's my best friend. Uh, I hate you, Riley. <laughs> I love you too, Mom. Uh, 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 yeah, we'll totally make out later and stuff. It'll be great. <laughs> hey, it's legal now. So. After dark. <laughs> I wish I had some like freaking saxophone music to play in the background. Or oh yeah, baby. So, uh, Riley, uh, I heard you uh, like telling stories about complete fucking disasters, huh? <laughs> so last night was the inaugural episode of the new season of the Dickheads Podcast, season four. After after season three went so amazingly with uh, it ended with fucking Maddox being on the show, I was. How could you top that, right? Like, that was insane, but here's what happens. Okay, so we all get together. Season four. There were so one. many N-words being dropped. So many yeah, N-words. Just, yeah, just, just yeah. Just out of okay, the blue so. for absolutely no reason. I Like, I, I get in there and, like, bam, 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 rapid fucking fire. <laughs> and I'm here's like, what, what the fuck? So, the, to give a little backstory, on the last episode of season three, uh, Jesse from Pot Awful went on the show. And that's the reason that Maddox was on the show, because Jesse called him on the phone. Um, and he also brought, like, two of his, like, listeners with him, like, a fr friends of his from the Pot Awful Circles. And I guess they were, like, really good on the Season 3 episode, and they decided that they were going to take over Season 4. Me, having already set up the Season 4 Discord and preparing for Season 4, was, was not happy about this. So we, 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 we argue for a while and eventually we decide we're just going to work together and we're going to make a season four. And we get together last night. I get, we got Mo. Mo, Mo Mo's a co-host on season four. We got those those two guys from Pot Awful. Fucking Sc Scott from Australia and Fist. Or Chewy, whatever the fuck he goes by now. Um... <laughs> Yeah, there, there was a fucking name change that I didn't understand. I was like, what the hell is going on? You, you want to be known as what? And like, the show starts and, and had, there's already a name change. It was fucking hysterical. Yeah, we had Grant Leahy, of course, the 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 spear center of the Dickheads podcast. I was I was excited to have Grant did, on. Did I like you, Grant. He's a cool guy. Did you mean the spiritual center? Because I did not understand the spear center. <laughs> what is the spear center? Is that like we'll the tip of the spear? We'll say that I went with that. We'll go with that. Um, okay. We had we had Cadigans and Rommel there. They haven't been on the Dickheads podcast in a while. That was exciting. Now the first the first of many mistakes that night is that apparently behind uh, behind my back, Grant Leahy apparently instructed Cadigans and Rommel to quote get as drunk as possible and say the N word a lot. Oh my god. <laughs> And that did indeed happen. Cadigans and Rommel were very drunk, and they did say the N-word a lot. And then there's the, you know what really just fucking frightened the shit out of me? Was what? the, uh, it, it was the, the borderline, is there going to be a domestic dispute? Because it sounded like <laughs> between Cadigans and Rommel, I don't think so. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. It, so. it just it, it sounded pretty bad for a little bit there because I was, I was listening and then they were like, "Shut up, you hole!" <laughs> and, and just <laughs> the all quote this I shit. most remember is "Shut the fuck up, bitch, and stop talking to men on the internet." <laughs> see, see, that's 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 exactly where I, I was thinking to myself, "Oh shit, is there about to be a thing? Are we about to hear some fucking cops going?" <laughs> and the or fucking the, rest the or... fucking assholes from Pot Awful, fucking Chewy and Scott are encouraging this domestic violence. Because why not? <laughs> Because why not? So that episode happens, and then the aftermath is where Mo kind of falls off. Mo was there for the episode. Yeah, but there I, I, are I, uh, there are uh, hours uh, of aftermath to this. Yeah, uh, I, I can actually explain that. See, uh, we were talking. See, everything. Everyone was like, "All right, congratulations." I thought that was pretty good. And then you were like, "That was terrible." And then <laughs> this is what you know, uh, 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 Mister Man here. Pull the freaking Sean and tell him what you did, Sean. No, hold on. I'll get there. I'm telling the story. I'm weaving the tale. So after the episode is finished, it's horrible. There's no way you can put it out. Uh, fucking Chewie and Scott 
insist that we put out no edited episodes, which could not happen with that episode. So, as far as they know, and as far as as far as they knew, and as far as Mo kn- knew until now, because he left before I could reveal the truth. I fell asleep. I, del- I, del- I deleted the episode. As far as they knew, I deleted. I told them I deleted the episode, and we had big arguments. I got like ragged on hard. I banned Chewie and Scott from the Discord, and then I'm talking to um. Grants and Cameron and Beth and Jesse from Pot Awful jumps in the call and berates me for banning his friends. Uh. So I so I unban his friends so he'll stop being mean to me. <laughs> that did not work. And then it? I no it, it pretty much works a little bit. It, 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 it impeded it a bit. And it's like I, I, I would pop in and out of there after like I finally woke up and I would go in there like I all I would hear I would jump into is Riley you're a piece of shit I can't believe you fucking disco- you deleted the episode yada 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 and then I jump out I was like oh, okay that's still going on so <laughs> big bombshell here Mo that you missed oh, okay. I did not in fact delete the episode <laughs> that was I a thought, lie oh I thought you deleted the episode because we did like the first no, I episode lied about like deleting five the fucking times. I lied about deleting the episode, and... Why did you we... lie about the deleting the episode? Because <laughs> it was funny! It was confusing, anyway, oh, it long, was just long, a bunch of long shit! Long story short, long story short, that episode still exists. Uh, Grant Leahy edited out all of the gamer words, and I'm gonna put it out. It'll be out by the time that you hear this. W- w- Alright, so let me get this straight. It was actually salvageable? You, you, you I mean, the know. only ba- the only thing about it that I didn't like was how often Robble said the N-word, and Grant just had to censor it, and that was fine. Oh my god, I, I can't wait to listen to this fucking episode. Yeah, it's gonna be great, and then and then there's probably gonna be two Dickheads podcast season fours after that, because che- th- me and Chewie and Scott don't get along, so I gave ownership of the that Discord to Scott and, and <laughs> made my own Discord... Which I have to send Mo the link to. Mo's not in there yet. Mo's got to be in there. He's the spicy co-host. He's my only one now. The Chewy and Scott are gone. Oh, that's that's <laughs> nice. So I'm, I'm going to be a co-host of the podcast I had nothing to do with. And I was like, all right, I guess now I'll you show have up. everything to do with it, Mo. So, now it's just the two of us. So let me get this. Sh- so so let me get this straight. <laughs> There's going to be two competing season fours. <laughs> Pretty much. This is but like. There's going to is- be. Go ahead. There's going to be the Dickheads podcast season four, and then there's going to be the Dickheads podcast season four presented by Pot Awful. <laughs> oh, dear God. All right, well, I, I, I can't stand that Pot Awful guy, so you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll help you out with your version of season four then. I'll, I'll, compete, up, right. I'll, I'll compete up against that guy. That'll be, that'll be great. All right, <laughs> let's go ahead and start the show. Cup of coffee in the big time. Cup of coffee in the big time. Welcome to the MoCast, oh yeah! I'm your host, Mo Diggity. <laughs> and joining us today are t- our co-hosts, uh, Robin, say hello. Hello. And of course, Riley from Riley Speaks and from all the other legendary podcasts that are just fucking dumpster fires just throughout the land. Mo, it's over! The SWAT team, they've come for me, they found all my drugs, it's over, the raid's happening right now! Oh no! Oh god, they're coming! No, coming, please, Mo. please, uh, you're going to go to jail for such a long time because of all the drugs that you have. Oh, yes. No, the Tylenol. No, the Tylenol. Oh. All the fucking <laughs> ibuprofen that I take. Not the tip of up to me. <laughs> dude, I, I watched this dude freaking do rails of Advil, man. It's been great. <laughs> Just like, hey, party on, Wayne. Dude, I had one team boofed an aspirin. You pooped at Aspen? Oh, dude, that's living on the edge right there. <laughs> I snorted my diabetes medication off of Hooker's ass. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, joining us also today, for however long he feels like it, is uh, Paul. Say, or Mo Dickity. In, in the fucking podcast. In the podcast. <laughs> in, in my fucking Discord server. Uh, this dude, this man has ripped me off completely. He has stolen my identity. I am Mo Diggity, and he decided to call himself Mo Diggity. 
and he zoomed in my job of the hut post. It just the, the son of a bitch fucking just Wait, zoomed in. Mo? Yes, I I, 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 I'm the mo. I, I'm the real mo. Yeah, but there's two of you. Which yeah. one is mo? Well, see, the the one speaking, that's me. And th this man down here is a freaking imposter. Who just zoomed in my Jabba the Hut picture slightly, and then made it into his little fucking hoop do. But yeah. Oh, I, he I... took the picture and zoomed it all the way out. <laughs> zoomed it all the way in. Or zo zo not all the way in, but just a little bit in. But you know, this is the kind of sh type of shenanigans that you you come to expect when you're in my server, because why not? So. Everyone is Mo. Yes, everyone is Mo. There's so many Mo's. Mo, 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 Mo. And yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, so... On the show where everyone is Mo. Yes, Mo, 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 Mo. Anyway, so today's topic is drugs and probably wrestling too because I know Paul wants to talk about wrestling. And I just got the WWE Network and I decided that I would use my drugs that I currently have uh, afford to get high and then watch uh, said wrestling events because I was I about got to my say, would you combine the two anyway? Wrestling, yeah. wrestling's better with drugs, yes. Yeah, Dude, it, it's like it's it's like a, a summoning your Zord from Power Rangers, except you know it's all illegal substances <laughs> that I can go to jail for. So I'm like reaching my hand out for like a doobie or like this is know, all like satirical, by the way. None of us have ever touched a drug in our lives because they're illegal and we've never committed an illegal act. Well, maybe you wouldn't, but I would. Jeez. Anyway, don't be such a funny guy, you little bitch. Hey, anyway, anyway. so <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling the police. It's the sound of the police. Whoop whoop. Anyway, so yeah. I don't know about you people, but I think I've already turned my brain into Wait, most... you people? Shut up! Oh no, what have you... This is what happens when you go on a podcast like the Dickheads podcast. Suddenly it's, oh, you people. Next you there's gonna be people. an N-bomb. Hey, I swear, <laughs> hey, hey, my show is N-bomb free, okay? I don't think... The, I... the, the viewers don't know yes, it, sir? but just before the show, Mo dropped about like five or six of them. Hey, hey, you're not supposed to rat me out for God's sake. I'm like your. In his private life, I've known Mo for a long time, and I know in his private life that he has uh, he has some opinions about certain groups and demographics that may be considered controversial in today's current cultural climate. <laughs> Speaking of controversial, uh, uh, Rachel Dolza or, or that it, it, the, the chick. Rachel who, Dolezal. There, there we go. Thank you. You know, I, I don't know if she knew about this, but she she's got like a spot on that uh, website Cameo, right? And there you can like uh, uh, pay like people of certain influence uh, to just like say some stupid shit, right? And people have taken like serious advantage of that. Uh, like for example, that the Rachel chick that I was just talking about, she she read the fucking uh, quote unquote FBI criminal statistics, and she had no freaking idea what she was saying. So it just uh, uh, she, uh it's just it, it's fucking terrible. Uh, there were some Holocaust deniers that got to Al Borland and got him to talk about like not putting wooden doors on your shit and it's just it's been a fucking nightmare that site and there's been but there's been great laughs that have come out of it like i i kind of love it when, uh, when when people get fucking trolled because they don't research the shit that they're saying because honest to god you shouldn't fucking trust anyone on the internet fucking ever like if they ever tell you to say like they told rachel to talk about the the 13 percent crew like maybe you should like research what that means because there's gotta be some keywords right in google when you're googling the shit there's gotta be something that just pops i mean up, if you right? just google 1350 i think you figure out like oh well probably i shouldn't do that or like the or, or like fourteen eighty eight for God's sake! Like you you couldn't just be asked to to, to fucking Google fourteen eighty eight just to figure out what the fuck that means. But you just you just roll with it. It really shows you how lazy celebrities really are. Well, it also shows them that like they should really just have a PR manager. 
Well, yeah, I mean, shit, but they, they, they've they been in the industry for years and years. I'm sure that they have the connections to go get one, but unfortunately, they just don't. But anyway, we're not here so much to talk about that. We're here to talk about our partying days and our, you know, like, our, our good experiences on drugs or bad experiences on them. Uh, what, uh-oh, uh... -oh, uh Oh, it's, it's not partying days. It's it's depression days. Depression. Oh, it can be depression days too. That's that's fine. <laughs> I, it doesn't all have to be all partying. You can talk about like you know crushing up and snorting a Zoloft or something. You know, I I don't really care. Just like you know, get down with your bad self. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's go ahead and talk to to Riley. Riley, do you have any crazy stories from you back in your youthful days of indiscretion? So I have a I have a confession to make to the the council here. Oh, okay. It's gonna it's gonna sound crazy. I know you all won't believe it. But I've I've put on such a such a bravado of being the drug the drug connoisseur. I do all the drugs all the time. Oh okay, all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. That's that's what you think of me. But in reality, I have never done even a single drug. So wait a minute, my, my idea of you with like, you know, a, a button up t-shirt <laughs> with, the, with with like no undershirt. So it's just like your your moves flying free. Yes. And just like with shades going, you know, with, with uh, dance music going on in the background, like that, that and, and just bitches all around you. Like just fucking dropping acid. And I don't know shit. why you yeah. have no. images <laughs> of <laughs> underage children with their moves out. Bro. I'm not he's underage 18. anymore. He's 18. He's 18. He's 18. <laughs> oh, great. Right, so it's 18. like the fucking... Girls do porn controversy. And how long have you had this idea in your head, Mo? No, no, I just figured he was a <laughs> Three party days. animal. No, 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 I just figured you're a party animal. Mo's man. like, I, I so, so now that you're 18, you're okay if I'm uncut, right? <laughs> okay, oh my anyway. god. <laughs> so, even, even never being told around, <laughs> even being around, like, drugs, like, well, not being around them, but, like, even, like, touching, like, an illegal substance, just makes me like really nervous like uh an anonymous person who will have not this close does the weed who i know and <laughs> they wanted me to go get <laughs> does the weed and they wanted me to go get the weed for them and i had to touch the weed and it made me right very right what? someone who isn't you does weed i i know how it goes no no hey hey robin 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 hello <laughs> I've I've never done a weed. I've never done a marriage one. I've never done a cockin. I've never done a cockin. <laughs> never done a cockin. We're learning a lot right now. So well, yeah, it's. Uh... <laughs> I've never done even a I'm single glad to see you hair so long, though. I feel uh, like we need Barbara Walters as a mediator or something. This. Bob Will Walter. Hmm. I'm Bob Walter. <laughs> Oh, now, Riley, man. you've never like you know had a surgery or anything, and gotten gotten some good stuff after. No, I've never had a surgery. Never done no dental work. Well, perhaps I've marijuana. been pumped with like laughing gas at a dentist, but that's like professional so you setting. Mean, you mean to tell me that never once in your life that's a never, drug. You you've never <laughs> taken a twenty sack of cocaine and mixed it with <laughs> a scoop of Vaseline. And just plugged a whole thumb full of that up your ass. <laughs> not even once. No, in not even years. once. In the 18 Mo, years. 18 years of my long life. What kind of fucking people do you hang out with these days, Mo? I, you know, I don't know. If this were Red Fair, you know, I would get like at least 15 people that could co that, that could say that, yeah, I've done that before, Paul. But, you know. Yeah, no. See, kids these days, it's that you, you don't get it. You don't understand how much adventure has been lost in life. Because when Mo and I were teenagers, what we could do was <laughs> we could go out into the middle of nowhere in our hometown and we could take lead pipes full of black powder and rusty nails and we could throw them at the bloated corpses of various illegally hunted wildlife in a drainage ditch and drive away really fast or run away really fast and watch it explode and sp spread mud and spew shit everywhere completely out of our minds 
on whatever we could get our hands on in that little shrimp town of Palacios. Oh man, dude, that place was a fucking crime scene, and not I even mean, like, and like only half our fault. It was, yeah, like, there was yeah. other shit there too, like you said, because people would just like they'd hunt fucking hogs like without a license, right? Yeah, they'd get the the bits, the tender bits that they wanted, and like a bunch of fucking savages, they would go, "Well, don't need you anymore." Splat. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it just, was they, like uh. Like the the hogs, the hogs were always great. The hogs were great for shooting with the BB guns and shooting with the uh, like going out there and shooting with the twenty two. And um, we'd go out there with BB guns and Coke bottles full of dry ice and drink drink vodka out of glasses. Oh and, yeah, drink <laughs> and, irresponsibly too. Oh my God, so irresponsibly, so irresponsibly. Um, the boredom years. Oh, it, it not even it, it. So you got to understand the kind of town that this was, and and the time of like the actual time in human history, because you know for most of our developmental years, Mo and I, we were on the cusp of like the the technological breakthroughs. Like we were we were committing crimes and misdemeanors on no, 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 uh, in, in theory <laughs> in theory in theory in no, theory it's, like, it's, it's no, hypothetically it's, it's fine it's it's shit that the statute of limitations statute are gone limitations you're fine is expired yeah <laughs> and anyways they were we were minors at the time it would have been prosecuted according to the law at the time it's all it's all under the bridge literally in this case so <laughs> the fun fact though you know when you're a kid and you grow up in this small town of 5,000 people on a busy day, uh, you know, graduating classes usually in the range of 89 to 110 kids for a graduating class, one high school in the whole town, one junior high in the whole town, and they're on the same campus, um, two elementary schools so that you don't have the, the, nose, the nose pickers and the thumb up the butthole kids all in the same school. <laughs> You send the <laughs> you send the ones you send the ones that are discovering how much fun it is to sit a certain way on the toilet, you know. You, you send them to the other school, These so are the you don't ones. wind up with the you don't wind up with the situation. But uh, yeah, the, those are the ones who are like standing on the toilet seat taking a shit. They're like trying yeah. to get standing up. <laughs> yeah, well, like you know, the kind of kid that is is eleven years old and still pulls his pants all the way down to his ankles to piss in the stand up urinal. You know? Oh my like, god! Like hikes hikes his shirt up to his little boy tits, and pulls his <laughs> pants all the way down. Like fucking right. butters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know how fucking uncomfortable that is to walk into as an oh. adult, grown ass man, when you walk into a public restroom and some fucking middle class idiot with their kid, this kid that's too old to be doing that shit, they're in the Walmart bathroom. The kid's got his pants all the way down to his ankles. That's that's uncomfortable, man. Dude, I, I there was a uh, how should I phrase this a special needs child who uh, okay. who was like about sixteen seventeen because I think it was like when they do their skating trips or whatever. It was hey, me. He was just me? he just turned eighteen. No, okay, no, this is the Riley story. <laughs> no, but but seriously, uh, no, but seriously. So this kid comes in, he's like, oh, and you know, like he's just fucking, he's yelling, and I'm just like trying to take a piss. I'm trying not to laugh because, like, I'm <laughs> immature, and I I will laugh at anything that's funny. I don't give a shit. Like yeah. I have laughed at people like arguing with each other at Walmart. <laughs> it was that God. That was a really embarrassing story because I, I was like, I they, they said naughty no no words of hate that I cannot say. <laughs> For I R to white man, and I can't be saying that shit these days. But uh, but no, nah, like uh, they were they were say one of them made a real point. One of them called them the N word, and I did this number, <laughs> and I didn't know that I did that so hard. And then like I looked straight ahead, but I could feel both pairs of eyes fucking looking at me, <laughs> like this white boy fucking talking. They listen to us. And, you know, like, all I'm trying to do is just fucking get through my day and get my hot dogs and my raviolis home. So, because <laughs> I could put them in the proper place. Because I was on the drugs at the time. And by drugs, I mean the weed. Uh, oh, no, th this was a couple of years ago, so it was also... 
weed and Adderall and uh, well, what the hell was I taking here? Oh, I have it. I have a pill ball right here of it. Uh, oh, venefaxine. Yeah, the, the, which ah, is a, okay. which is a, a substitute for Vexor. Yes. And it works. It works pretty well on me. You know, like uh, my dick ain't having it, but you know, it works really well on me. It's sort of like do you get? You know, it's just kills the libido like there there's nothing like like there everybody's will just like cut it off oh, oh you don't just... know the struggle i deal oh. with my boyfriend also takes effexor and i'm just like please just anything come on oh dude i i, I mean like, uh, i mean not to get too tmi here but just god damn <laughs> Like no, all, all, what, all I what want. audience do you think that this podcast is marketed towards? You say whatever you want to say. <laughs> well, no, like the last there thing anyone. No, there is no TMI. The, the, well, hang on. Don't say anything you want to say. Like, don't don't turn this into the Dickheads podcast season well, four. Yeah. Like, uh, with reason. Hey, all the Game Awards are censored on the Dickheads podcast. <laughs> 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 no, but but seriously though, man, like uh, uh, effects have worked really, really well for me. It's just that it, I I would also have like a little bit of like low energy, like sometimes I couldn't get through my day, and I'm like just sitting there going, "Well, shit, man!" Like I want to be all right, but I also don't want to fucking just be like a lump on you know a stump on a log, you know. I want to do stuff, and I want to be like I was motivated to do stuff, but. Paul, are you having like a soccer match or something with like some debris in the background there? You uh, you just keep telling your story, boy. Uh, all right, Paul. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't uh, you fuss over what I'm doing over here in my space. He's, it sounds so echoey. Did he go down to his fucking dungeon? And he's like checking out no. all of his fucking. No, see, well, see, I, I, I want Mo to keep, I want Mo to put it, I want Mo to remember exactly where he is telling his story, but I have to tell you, I live, I live in a house with very little furniture. None of the, none of the rooms of the house, I've been here for over a year. I don't have a couch or like living room furniture. I have an ottoman that I sit on to, to play on my computer downstairs before it died. You haven't dumpster uh, dived yourself a couch yet? No, dude. That's no. what we always do. Yeah, but I don't need a couch because I don't spend time in the living room because I'm either hanging out in my room or I'm hanging out in here in Adam's room on Reich's computer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's... I don't really need living room furniture, so I don't have it. But, like, also, Adam's room is very empty because I gave him the larger of the bedrooms so that he could hook up his uh, vibe. So that he could actually have a big VR play space. Oh, okay, for, cool, cool. You know, full room size. Yeah. And that I gotta tell you, I there was there was a day because I'm I'm back on my medication, right? Uh, Mo, finish your story. Sorry, I I'm I'm I. Uh, oh. oh no I'm, no! Uh, I'm uh, uh, medicated this morning myself, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a little bit medicated too, but my medication. You were talking about the effects of Effexor. Well, and how it made your your peen not want to come out and do the ween ween. Oh yeah, it was just well, like seriously. Turtle like, shelling. Well, like seriously, like you know, What's I'm just the like. What's matter? Where are you going, little fella? Well, like seriously, it's fucking crazy, you know, because like you're you're going well. I want to be all right, but I want my dick to work. Because like, yeah. what's the point of being a man or even having it no. for crying out loud? If it don't work, you know. It's What's like, the I, point of feeling okay if my dick doesn't yeah, work? Yeah. Well, no, I'm no, I'm sorry. I I, I kind of I think no. I honestly think that that's my line right there. So like I gotta have both here. No. How or, much dick are you slinging on it on a regular basis? <laughs> hey, the, you know wow. that that doesn't. All right. First off, that does no, not I'm matter. No, I'm serious. You really have to consider it because you you really have to consider this if. If your ability to live a fulfilling life otherwise is negatively impacted by not taking this medication. No, hang on, hang on. Mo's getting up in age, you know, and the prostate becomes a problem. And if you uh -huh. don't, you know, every uh -huh. once in a yeah. while, uh -huh. it's going gonna, it's gonna to enlarge. You're going to get cancer. It's not good. Okay, so there, there are – so I'm on Zoloft now, and Zoloft for me, I, I don't lose um, – I do not lose libido necessarily. I, I don't lose the ability to perform. Uh, what I what I usually experience is delayed or um, anorgasmic side effects. Um, 
whenever I was on the when I was on the boat. So I got put on Zoloft when I was on deployment. And um, to me, the effect that it had was hilarious because when you're on a ship out in the middle of the ocean, you've been out for out to sea for a while, you know, it you you start to notice things, right? The first couple of weeks you're out to sea, you go into the to the men's restroom to clean up in the morning, uh-huh. and the shower stalls are all pretty much clean. Uh, people might leave bars of soap or empty shampoo bottles. After about a month in, you start finding every now and then a stray page from a porno magazine, like stuck to the wall of a shower or in the trash next to the toilets. And as the months go on, you start just finding whole sheets, like people made a whole wall in a shower stall of, of nudie mags and there's empty conditioner what? bottles everywhere. Oh my and God. So just, just picture that if you will. Take a bunch of 19 to 35 year old men and put them on a boat and put that boat in the middle of the ocean for months at a time. And just imagine how much jerking off goes on on those boats. You have to it's... imagine that there's like a little like lever like that the captain or someone has to pull just because like they, they they that's how like they, they get the excess spooge that fucking goes Dude. through the thing like Absolutely. it's got to be it's got to be like it's got to be heavier than water right there so... are oh my god dude you the, here's the thing right this there are, so so just picture this right. <laughs> You know how you know how a septic system works, right? Uh huh. How, how how you flush your toilet and it goes into a big hole in the ground, and it just sits there and digests. There's, you know, so ruminates. Imagine, yeah. So so instead of having that nice delicious compost in a tank under your backyard, imagine carrying that with you in your car, and they call those CHT tanks on a ship. And every now and then you got to let them vent. So sometimes you'd be out smoking a cigarette and out of nowhere, the, every fart in the universe that <laughs> has ever come out of any alien's fucking purple mole and hair covered asshole comes belching up at you while you're standing there having a smoke. You're already. I'd be careful out. with a cigarette at that point. Like you could have combust with all that. Carbon and methane. Ooh. So yeah, yeah, the hydrogen sulfide. The safety the H2S, hazard. Yeah, the H two S is the one that'll get you. But uh, so anyway, there's all that jerking off going on. That and delightful. You know, you're, you, it's it's just you know you've been away from your wife or your girlfriend or from your favorite whore at the local bar in that port that you like to go to when you're on deployment. Um, people get or real boyfriend. miserable. Yeah, yeah. Well, at the time, it was um, because I served from 2005 to 2009, so it was don't ask, don't tell, but the stance of the general, like, military public was was softening. Um, Younger people were coming in in higher numbers. Uh, People that were more gung-ho, like, traditional conservative-minded people were starting to phase out. It was more like Ron Paul libertarians that were starting to come in. Um, and uh, so the stance on certain things was was shifting so there were people that you knew were gay but they were really good at their job and it just like in real life it didn't matter that they were gay but you knew that you couldn't talk to them openly about it in like official duty status like you could talk to each other off the record and be like look dude I know you're I know you're gay no big deal. And it's like, okay, cool. So don't feel, don't feel like you got to hide yourself. But at the time it still was very much a, uh, something that you could get discharged from the Navy and from the military in general, if you were out and open. So, um, especially in an IT community, um, it doesn't fucking matter. You know what I mean? So, right. Um, and it's not like it's not like in our job, you know. I was on an aircraft carrier, yeah, whoopty doopty. But um, you know, when you're floating off the coast of Hawaii, and it's like woohoo party time, inviting like uh, foreign military leaders on board the ship to drink Molson 
on the <laughs> flight deck. <laughs> it's like the, the biggest was... problem is that you know you're doing important work and and you want you know the Lord in heaven on your side. And if there's gay men doing that work, you know God's not going to look favorably on it. You know oh. maybe things will go bad. You know. Well, hey. so so just just to give you some you know the the uh, the the life that I lived on board the Abraham Lincoln was a very, very Beautiful. strange, very, very weird life. And uh, I made some interesting friends and some very, very curious enemies on, on that ship. Like there was this guy on board the, on board the Lincoln and uh, you know, sticking with the, sticking with the theme of drugs and alcohol, right? Um, this guy, he was a, uh, I don't know if if he was ever diagnosed as having a specific autism spectrum disorder, but he was. Uh, does everybody know who Uncle Fester is? Yeah, yeah, from Adam's Family. Yeah, is oh. everybody okay? So picture yes. Uncle, <clears throat> picture Uncle Fester, about six foot two, and instead of sounding like Uncle Fester and like, he sounded like this. His name was Petty Officer Quig. And Petty Officer Quig liked to go out and twink at the, at the bar and play with koala bears. <laughs> so Petty, Petty Officer Quig also liked to, uh, we, Craig liked to, uh, search for very specific things on the internet and uh, of course we were the it department so every every network connection that was made on and off the ship was in our purview um so we could see everything that people were searching for in real time and we could um we had scripts to remotely install we didn't install it by default because it wasn't approved for default installation but we had scripts using sys internals power tools to, uh, or the PS tools to install, uh, the VNC server remotely and activate it silently so that we could, um, on demand connect to remote computers, to people doing shit in the library or people like it'd be two in the morning and they thought they could get away with it. And there I am sitting in my, in my workstation, right? Uh, whacked out on um you know i was on zoloft for the depression but that was all that they were giving me on the boat it wasn't like the cocktail that i'm on now um so they had me on zoloft and zoloft meant that as much as i might have wanted to watching porn didn't really do anything for me it might get excited but i was basically just i'd i'd have to stop because my hands were starting to get pruny you know like no, I was shit. sitting in the bathtub for two hours. Uh -huh. so it's just like, it's like, okay, I can't, I can't moisturize my hand walking around the whole boat smelling like cocoa butter. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you, when you look like I do, that's not, that's not the norm. You know, uh, Wilson, why do you smell like hand lotion and your, your hands, my God, they're, you, they're, they're so they're they're so rich and colorful and <laughs> full of life. They're pulsing. <laughs> yeah, it's like meanwhile my balls are the sizes of grapefruits because I've just been fucking jiggling them around. They're like, oh yeah, we're gonna get a good one. No, you're not. The brain's not gonna let it happen. So I started using uh, I started using porn to make uh, fun sound clips and and sound boards. Oh and, yeah. You know, like as as I continue to this day to do, um, you know, it was it was it was really great. Whenever we would get emails, because typically it was just the default Windows NT. But whenever I would get emails, I'd get sounds like dropping fucking loads, which is cool. Whenever you work the night shift and you don't normally have people around to hear it but what sucks is when you're working during the day and it's two in the afternoon or 1400 as we call it and uh you didn't sleep the night before and you're all zoned out and weird zombie man and you get an email and chuck norris <laughs> comes on your computer and says hi this is chuck norris uh some people don't like that 
it, because you're not supposed to do that and uh, they yell at you and then you get in trouble and they <laughs> keep you flapped but, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then you get revenge later and, and you decide to pee in their noodles um, what? well so with, with um, Zola, yeah so so has everybody here or anybody here else been on like Zoloft or uh, Lexapro I know you guys said you've been on effects or, or have experience with people on effects. Have any of you done any of the like? I don't remember if I've done. I don't know if I've done Lexapro. Okay. I've, I've done a lot of a lot of antidepressants. Yeah. I may have. If I did, it was for a short time. Yeah. So my experience with the SSRIs has been, like I said, it it'll make me last longer. And so whenever I was with, um, uh oh going to sleep um when i was with my son's mother um what was crazy was i was on zoloft and she was on adderall and that was an amazing combination um because whenever i was on zoloft like i said i didn't have a problem getting it up and wanting to get down i just had a problem with the gate being opened and that you know that whole process to kick off in my brain. So um, I was good to go. Uh, my wife at the time, you know, she'd take her Adderall for her ADHD and it, you know, I'd get a message at work, like, you know, her sister's gonna watch the kid because as soon as I get home, like I'm expected to sling that dick, you know, for like, and, and the thing too is, you know, Adderall keeps you up at night. And if you're on only Zoloft, um, I've had the experience that Zoloft without being on Trazodone at the same time, um, it will let me stay up as long as I want. It'll let me go as far into the manic phase as I, as I want to. Um, so it, there'd be times where it was like nine o'clock, we'll go to bed and we ain't done till two in the morning. And it was just like, you know, good times, and, and it was all thanks to pharmaceuticals, but, um... As are all good times. Yeah, yeah. Well, because I, I, I just, I'm, I'm lucky that I get the prescriptions that I get for the price that I get. You know, I get them through the VA, so I pay eight bucks for a prescription, so 24 bucks a month, and I get my, you know, I get my, uh, Prazosin to keep my, uh, adrenaline and and you know that whole fight or flight reflex keep that under control um the trazodone to knock me out and give me more uh more serotonin. the trazodone really knocks you out yeah yeah the trazodone well they uh they put me this time the last time i was on all of this it was more like an intervention dosage um, it was, you know, I went inpatient for a week at the VA hospital and, uh, they had to get me, uh, squared away, stabilized. And so I spent a week there and my medication was given to me by a, a me and Jamaican woman who would stand there and make sure that you actually took your pills. Uh, not quite as severe as like drop dead. Yeah, lift your tongue. yeah exactly. Lift your tongue. exactly. It was, you know. Uh, they weren't sticking, you know, they weren't, they weren't coming in and making you eat cornflakes and sticking tubes up your butt and giving you enemas with, you know, uh, any kind of weird, like almond milk or anything. But it, okay. it was very clear that if you didn't take your medication, that they were going to, they were going to call the lady to come in with, uh, you know, of course, since it was a veteran's hospital, they would everything's got to didn't take your medication. They would pull out a gun and they'd shoot you in the head. No, no. They, what they do is they, they call it the B-52, and the B-52 is the shot of Thorazine or whatever other sedative that they're going to give yep. you. So the B-52, that's when it's the big, stocky, you know, uh, either... The huge male be, nurse. <laughs> or or just a woman that looks like a linebacker. You know, it's it's like... Uh, it's like it's like a big buff woman with a huge yeah. and an accent. Yeah, it's it's like Dwayne the Rock Johnson with tits. Uh, you know that that person comes and grabs you, 
while you know fucking the some lady that looks like she came from a Bob Marley music video fucking hits you with the syringe and then they just drop and they put them in their bed and when they wake up they're just like are you feeling better Mr. Charles <laughs> it's like, I think this is just the podcast now. I haven't heard Mo talk in like ten minutes. Well, no. Yeah, Mo, are you here? Yeah, yeah, I'm My right bad. here. Uh, no, no, no. That's that's fine. You're like you're talking. That's like the point of a podcast is to talk. Yeah. So like I'm not going to interrupt <laughs> anyone, Riley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you, you have see, the best usually in the podcast, you go on twenty minute rants about every other thing somebody says. I uh, okay. For the, for the record, <laughs> I try not to go off on the twenty minute rants. It's just those happen. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Cause like I, I, I have no experiences with like a mean Jamaican lady who's like, would you like your Thorazine? No, that's that's that, that's yeah. more like Swedish chef. Would you like your Thorazine shot? That does, yeah. does nothing like no, that. No, dude. The, the nurses, the nurses at the VA psych ward. Honestly, they're like the, the vibe that they give off is just that. Fuck around and find out, boy. Like. Yeah, like, cause, don't cause, think I won't come upside your head, boy. Yeah, because you know? they go through 20 of you a day, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and like like me, you know, I grew up, my mom's a nurse, so I grew up knowing how to behave myself at the hospital and how to deal with medical people. Mm -hmm. So I don't go in there and raise a, raise a stink because I have to wait 20 minutes in the waiting room. I just sit my yeah, ass it's, in the It's funny because the way that you deal with medical people is the way that you deal with everyone else in life, period. Yeah, it's like, you know, this, this person has the ability to make sure that you either get better or worse. Like, why would you fuck with that person? Like, why would you... Why would you not think that they're doing the best that they can with it's, the resources they've got? Like you don't you don't mess with the people who handle your food and who handle your drugs and who, yeah, exactly. Know, slash medication. But, I mean, it's just it's just be like a, a commonly decent person. You know, it, it doesn't mean that you need to be fucking sunshine and lollipops. You can be Andrew Dice Clay. You know what I mean in the way that you talk to people, but. It, you just hey Goomba. You don't want to be a total yeah you know <laughs> hey fuck yous and fuck all of yous you know I'm fucking I'm buying a box of fucking tampons oh. I mean you can be that but as long as you know it's it's like you're that guy when you're sitting around with your friends but when the guy brings your fucking pizza you know what I mean you order a pizza so you can sit on your fat ass and smoke weed in a gravity bong in your bathroom and you know what i mean yeah <laughs> like, yeah yeah of course you're, it's like you're doing all this shit and then this guy brings you a pizza so you can be a fat shit and uh you know you got to be good to that guy yeah because you know that dude's like doing you a freaking huge solid you know your drunk yeah. up ass doesn't have to go driving anywhere to go get your little food stuffs here's like a a, a food servant to come shuffling towards your door to drop off your preferred food item and then boom you're done like now you can go back to getting baked or stoned or like doing a rail or something you know it's great i love food delivery those those people are our heroes man i know right <laughs> hashtag hashtag delivery strong Oh my god! But uh, that's one how thing. many how many times have you ordered food right online? And because I, I feel this way sometimes, is like like I'm just sitting in my chambers, and oh, I feel a, I feel a horrible draft. It's it's aroused my hunger. Uh, Belvedere, fetch me a pizza, would you, boy? And then. I, I get a beep on my phone and I look and it says Nugumbe. Nugumbe is picking up your order. And I, I see the picture. I have yes. Pizza. <laughs> yes. I get a phone call. I get a phone call that's like, I don't miss a ball. You miss a ball. Yes, this is Paul. I miss a ball. This is Nugumbe. I have a little pizza here. And. <laughs> I'm like, I fucking okay. love Houston. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I, I do love Houston. I do love Houston because anything you want to get from anyone you want to get it from, you can. Houston yeah. is yeah. the reality. Like you see a movie like, like Blade Runner or you see, you know, cyberpunk, you see the, all these futuristic cities. 
And it's always, you know, bright holograms and flashing lights and cool people dressed in exciting costumes. No, fuck you. It's downtown Houston. Yeah, we have rainbow fountains downtown. You know what else we have downtown? We have a man with his ass spread open, <laughs> squatting over a newspaper, yelling, ah! Dude. With fucking... <laughs> We have that in Houston, too. It's like, yeah, you know, we, we, we have a nice, you know, we have like a nice little monument to progressive ways of thinking. And, yeah. next, to the, and next to that monument is the lady screaming, give me a fucking dollar, you yeah. piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. dude, the, you have you, you have diversity in Houston, right? Mm -hmm. you, you know, on the one hand, you have uh, you, you have people that um believe that if they just give enough money to a rich guy that god's gonna bless them and then they buy buckets of food you know they, <laughs> they build a bunker in their grandma's garage and they spend all their time on the internet believing that you know it's it's a socialist agenda <laughs> replace replace all of us with automatons everyone innately knows this yeah but on the other side, you know, their next door neighbor is the guy that's like, we should just make all drugs legal. And there should be, you know, like, no borders at all. Because, you know, we're all just one humanity, you know. It's, it's all about vibration, you know. And like, like, you know, we're all really just made of light. See, one of those things is true. And it's Riley, not do not interrupt. <laughs> It's just it's just so weird to me that there's there's so so much variety in the amount of bullshit that people will believe. Like like and be convinced that their bullshit is more correct and right than some other crazy person's bullshit. Oh it's man. like it's like somebody that's a flat earther that doesn't deny um the benefits of modern medicine you know it's like how can you be rational and clear thinking on this topic but on this other one you go completely bonkers and sometimes the answer is drugs sometimes the answer is uh you know uh i like to snort adderall i like to i like to put cocaine in a scoop of vaseline and shove it up my ass <laughs> Because why not, right? Because it's, why not? Sometimes that's the only way you're going to get through this day. And this yeah. is just today. Wait until you wait till to, yeah. wait until you see what you exactly. got to deal with tomorrow. And then you're doing two scoops of Vaseline. Yeah. Two, yeah. two scoops of raisins. Put cocaine just in my homemade butt. cookies instead of sugar. Just replace it. Okay. Yeah. No, you know what is good, though, is weed cookies. If done properly, cooking with weed can be delicious. And I don't just mean like... Everybody wants to make brownies and cookies and stuff. Yeah, I've had some really good cookies. But you know what's really awesome? Weed spaghetti. Oh weed my spaghetti. Gosh. Weed weed lasagna. Just take the butter. Take the let's say you make weed butter, right? It's really not that complicated. You gotta bake the weed first, then you gotta melt the butter in with it. You got to strain it out. You got to do this a couple of times. Whoop -de -doop -de. You make the butter, but then you use the butter to make pastas. You use it as your, you use the butter to sear your steaks. Uh, you use your butter to make like, you know, beef tips and gravy. You use it to make buttermilk biscuits. Oh my God. You can make like a big fat Southern breakfast that will fill you up and be comfort food and then we'll also make sure that you don't leave your fucking bed or couch for the whole day oh man that's that's the bee's knees right there dude i'm telling you i'm See, telling you i've only had like a i've done edibles once and i had a really kind of shitty experience with them oh. because uh hold on one second i got a cough Yeah, you didn't mute yes. shit. No, I yeah. muted myself and fucking <laughs> OBS. Just to announce the <laughs> everybody, everybody just take a moment to tell Mo <laughs> what a stupid, ignorant bitch he is. And how everybody. dare he. How dare he in 2020 in the midst of the COVID-19 hashtag pandemic. He just coughs. 
Yeah, fucking, you just infected the whole podcast. Your, I think we have to scrap it. Uh, check shit. your fucking check your fucking respiratory health privilege, Mo. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that after the show. Hash, hashtag bronchiodilators. <laughs> Hashtag ventilators uh, or, or something. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know what to add to this. But anyway, yeah. now, I, I've actually had like... How oh, dare you! How oh, dare you! <laughs> like, Greta, get out of here. Go eat your, go eat your beans. Greta, yeah. you're not supposed to be on the Bocast. Come on. How <laughs> dare you! How oh, dare you! You know she eats a shit ton of beans, apparently. <laughs> like no, like are you real, surprised? Like okay, so are there was surprised? this there was this photograph that came out in the press, right? It, uh, it was like, I, I it was pretty much just tabloid journalism, but you you know then again, what it what is it tabloid journalism? But it it, it came out, and uh, it was a, a picture of their car going through like a border <laughs> checkpoint, and there was a uh, there was a big ass fucking can of beans. Uh, with, with a fucking spoon in them, and it's where Greta sits. She sits in the fucking back. So she's sitting there screaming, "How dare you!" And she's just fucking starfing down this giant it's can of fucking bushy baked beans. <laughs> no, I think this robot. Greta, I Greta think this is a is a fucking robot powered by beans. <laughs> Dude, it's like a fucking bender. It was, it, dude, it's like a bending unit, but it's like it's like a bender unit in fucking Futurama, right? Yeah. But instead of beer, it's fucking beans that it has to fuel it, and it still lets out the same amount of noxious fucking gas as a bending yeah. unit would. Yeah. But, well, no, because you could you could theoretically have a machine that's powered by the energy generated by fermenting beans i guess <laughs> you, you can, no, that theoretically you could, eating beans man. she's eating beans yeah yeah she's a she's a she's a uh an alien android sent from the future sent from the future <laughs> damn it don't steal my bit god damn that's why yeah. that's, that's what i get to do god fucking damn it dude god damn it <laughs> I fucking hate this fucking shit. Uh. You got fucking shit fucking god fuck damn. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah. All right, all right, Man, all right. I remember so many druggy times with you, Mo. I remember so many. So Mo and I one time, right? We we uh. have these, uh, there's, there's this guy that, well, a couple of guys really actually. Uh, no, actually everybody in this story, um, we don't have mutual contact with anymore. Um, but it was a good, it was a good one. Our buddy Garrett Mostly because died. they're either dead or in jail or like, exactly. you know, states and There's, states away from us. Yeah. One is dead. One is dead to everybody. One is dead to us. And one is, uh, uh, Mo and I have differing levels of contact with this person, but Mo and I, you know, again, growing up in Palacios, we're bored. We got nothing to do. We're not old enough to even buy our own smokes. Um, you know, we're happy to be able to just hold our breath so long that we get dizzy. Uh, <laughs> you know, we hang out together smoking cheap ass generic cigarettes, um, you know, talking about times that we had gotten high before and how much fun it was. Like this, how you, you got to realize how pathetic this shit sounds now in hindsight. Uh, but we would sit around remembering and reminiscing times that we had been fucked up. Because we couldn't get fucked up. So we're like... Oh, that happens. You know, we're we're sitting around on the couch talking about... You remember that one time when we were high and we went and set the trash cans on fire in all the public bathrooms? Man, that was awesome. Isn't that this podcast? Just sitting around and reminiscing about times we got high? Yeah, it's not, not all the time. get to get high and then do it again. It's like, hey, I'm... High. I met in this episode, the episode yeah. about drugs, though. Oh, well, excuse me. Thank you for clarifying, Mr. Man. No, but anyway, I'm just, I'm just kidding, Riley. So, I'm just kidding. So no. Mo and I, this one time, we're, we're walking around this small town. We're, we're looking for shit to do. And we walk by our buddy Pulasic's house. And our buddy Pulasic and this other guy, Nick, they're in the backyard. And they got a, a trash can. And they're mixing up trash can punch. Oh, this is my which... favorite, one of my favorite stories. This is like one of the first times I ever gotten drunk drunk. Like this, I've, this I've had was... beer before, but nothing on this level. Yeah, this was this was a, a bombshell day. We uh we're walking around and hey, look, it's Pulasic and Nick, and they're in Pulasic's backyard mixing up trash can punch. 
Well, I've never tried that before. That sounds cool. What's it made out of? Well, here's the ingredients list. One, trash can. <laughs> Two. 40 packets of Kool-Aid. <laughs> One humongous bottle of Everclear. <clears throat> and uh, a giant bunch of chopped up pineapples, apples, and grapes, and watermelon. You throw it all in a trash can and you mix it up and you give it to Paul and Mo to taste test for you. And they don't know what they're taste testing for. They just know it tastes good and it feels like it's getting them fucked up. So we just drink a bunch of it. And uh, then, you know, Pulasic and Nick, they're going to take the trash can punch to the party they're going to. We'll see you later, guys. Like, okay, cool. So let's walk to Garrett's house down uh, you know, about two miles away. I, I will oh, hold on. Let me jump in and say, and, and then, uh, for, and then they uh, they busted out. Hey, Mo, have you ever had wild turkey before? Oh and yeah. So Pulasic, fucking Jason, just runs into the house, goes to his freezer, and busts out this big ass ball of frozen fucking wild turkey. <laughs> and see, here's the thing about the trash can punch and the wild turkey, right? We back then were not experienced drinkers at all i mean like i said <laughs> that was my first real time actually getting drunk and we 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 drank like irresponsibly uh, that that day and, but we didn't also we also didn't know what we were doing so and, and then our friends were just feeding us fucking alcohol and plying <laughs> us with they were plying us with fucking cigarettes and alcohol yeah, because we <laughs> I, I think they Smoke probably had. I, I think they had the weed, but I think they knew that if we did that, that we would go on over the edge, and we would yeah. have never left their fucking like backyard because we wouldn't been it would been able to move. But they they gave me the fucking <laughs> bottle of wild turkey, and it was just it, it, like the moment it taste touched my 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 tongue, it tasted so good because it was just fucking frozen. <laughs> So I ended up drinking like most of what was in the bottle and because uh, I forgot that it was whiskey because like I said, I'm not an experienced drinker and I give it back to them and I'm fucking annihilated by, by this time. And so my buddies were like, oh shit, Mo, you fucking almost killed like well, the bottle. And I was like, yeah, and it was just like God fucking ape shit. Anyway, Paul, go ahead. So we, we, we have to walk to our friend's house now, right? Because we can't, we, we don't have to go home, but we can't stay here. So we walk, um, there's alleys everywhere in our hometown and they're not like dark, creepy, uh, city of the, the movies alleyways. They're more like, um, in between the poorly upkept real asphalt roads, there are even less well kept up with dirt and grass holes behind people's houses. <laughs> so just about everywhere in town, you can drive between the, the houses, even though there's not a street there. Everybody just has a ditch with a, a fucking drainage pipe through it and dirt built up on top of it, and you can drive through alleys. So... It's a pretty comfy, cozy, little weird town. So we go walking through all these alleys. <clears throat> we wound up, <clears throat> excuse me. See, Mo, you got me, you got me using my privilege. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, pardon me, Cron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in a sinful mood. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> quite good, quite good, yes. I got the touch of the Rona. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. My God, man. <laughs> Belvedere, fetch my, <laughs> fetch fetch my me, mask. <laughs> fetch me my mask so I may breathe the freedom oh. of the air. Anyway, sorry. So we were so we were walking. We were so walking. we're walking. We wind up laying down in the gazebo in the in the park, and we got to lay there and we got to shake it off a little bit. We're feeling it way too hard. Oh yeah, we we're, we're playing fucking bit. bumper cars and like yeah, <laughs> walking through the alley. Fucking bad. Walking through the alley behind the bank. Uh, 
we used to think we could get away with anything and we could at the time like we would not survive being our age then today oh fuck think, no not, not, not the, we would have not in the post we would have ended up world, in jail no. yeah we would have ended up in jail like, like so hard too like it, because the it, place where we used to get fucked up and blow up pipe bombs is literally one cow pasture away from the Palacios Municipal Airport. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, if we tried any of this shit, we, yeah, we, we tried any of that shit. Gone to prison. Oh, federal pound me in the ass with the prison, with the, with the actual where they send the terror. They would have sent us to some fucking black site with other Dude, fucking terrorists. And we then would, we, be, been, we would never be seen again. See, no, the, the only time that we would be seen, right, Mo? So, so here's what happened, right? You get busted for this shit. They take you to this this camp. You're basically written off as a human being. The only ne the next time that anyone sees you, there's gonna be some weird viral gross video on the internet. You're gonna be like, "Have you seen that video? Two dudes, one turd." It's like, oh my God. what? No. And see, people who never met us before, they're gonna see. It's like, oh yeah, it's this really grainy video. And you see these two guys. They're in a room, and. And the room fills up with smoke or some kind of gas. I'm gonna be honest. Coughing. I'm gonna be honest. You don't have to finish this story. Oh, no, I'm finishing this story. God I'm finished. It. Committed. I'm taking it. Like I said, I'm on Zoloft, so I speak my mind. You know? <laughs> Sometimes that means you go to work and yell at your boss. Sometimes it means you come up with deranged <laughs> stories. <laughs> so in this case. In this case, they, they gas us in the room. See, in the video, the people watching the video, they just, it looks like we're smogging out, like we're hot box in a glass chamber, right? They think we're having the time of our lives. But what's really happening is we're getting sprayed with like PCP and meth and crack and uh, Hell yeah. basically, basically everything that would make you into a violent, you know, bath salts, fucking, they're, they're getting us juiced, juiced. And then they unleash us on a giant pile of shit. So the video everyone talks about is like two dudes, one turd. You know, what, what's really going on is they gas us. <clears throat> we eat a pile of shit, beat each other to death. The one that survives gets shot in the head. The bodies get dumped in the ocean. We're gone forever. I don't think I'd want to go any other way, though. Yeah, so that's why I'm glad that we lived. <laughs> that's why I'm the time that we did, and not in today's time, because none of that sounds fun happening to me. I think it'd make a great spooky movie, but I wouldn't we want need, it we, to happen to we me. We need like a horror movie. We need to get a movie studio to buy the rights to the life story as a fucking Paul and Mo and make a fucking yeah. Spooky oh, we could probably yeah. sell it. We could probably sell it to Trauma. Yeah. Like I actually follow I follow Lloyd Kaufman on fucking Twitter and like he's liked a few of my tweets. I'm sure I could just DM him and just go, Hey, uh, you want the right rights to our like like this? You're just gonna slide into Lloyd Kaufman's DMs? Oh dude, I will slide all up in there for that money. Celebrity friend name drop. You gonna you gonna go tribbing you gonna go tribbing with Kaufman? Tribbing with Kaufman. You know what's fucking crazy? It's keeping with, with our, the, putting the, my keeping, cock in his hand. Are, are, are you done? Does He's that make, stroking does that make me. You happy? I'm stroking him. Uh -huh. The heads are uh -huh. rubbing against. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Oh, Kaufman, blow your load on my shaft. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's great. There you go, Mo. I made your theme song for you. Cool. We have some more Mo music. That's 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 mm -hmm. great. That's great. Anyway, so. <laughs> Fuck. You gotta be keep able going. to work out the pressure. No, it, come on, come on, find keep it. pitching it. Keep pitching it. All right. Come on. Find Lloyd it. It's in there. It's in there somewhere. Oh, <laughs> Lloyd, God damn it. <laughs> Lloyd Lloyd Kaufman just blew a load and half of it landed on top, half of it landed on bottom. See, that's fucking disgusting. See that now I now I don't remember what the fuck I was gonna say. Come on, Mo. You got it, Mo. I believe in you. Are you gonna keep stroking or are you gonna pee it out? No, it's it's, it's gone. It's it's gone. Limp? I don't remember. You're gonna make I'm Lloyd going... Kaufman watch your cock go limp with his cup. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going limp. I'm going limp. <laughs> uh, and I'm done. Now I'm sad. Ah, oh, Mo, come on. See, I was trying to go for a. I I was trying to go for a trauma film. I didn't think we were doing a girls do porn video. 
Bitch, you fucking like distracted me <coughs> with this what? fucking jerk off. Fucking oh, you so distract? Scary. Yeah, yeah, I did. I needed you to soldier through it. I needed you to be the. I, I was trying to, to soldier this. through it, but you kept going. I need. Just, it you, got you know worse what, Mo? Worse. You know what, Mo? You know what I needed? I needed. I needed. Uh, I needed first time pain all. And you gave me fucking. You gave me. Uh, uh, you gave you. You just didn't bring your A game, man. Well, I'm sorry, man, but that's just how it is. And you know, we're at the hour 10 mark, and I think unless anyone else has any other riveting tales of interest that they want to drop on us, I think we'll go ahead and call it a podcast. <laughs> have you gotten even a single good Robin drug story? Well, actually, I was trying to get to that, you, 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 you so-and-so. You uh, said we were going to end, Mo. You, you gotta I said I was better. going you to. Gotta... I was going to. Yeah, and we didn't get any of R Riley's drug stories either. Yeah, yeah I told a story about how I had to touch weed and it made me uncomfortable. Mm. That's true. And then there was. But you did one... say you went on laughing gas, and nitrous is fun. And then he was all like, "Oh, fuck, Gungam style." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All I remember about the laughing gas is it didn't make me. The only thing it did, like, it didn't make me feel weird at all. Like, the only thing it did is like, it did exactly what it's supposed to do. It took the drilling of my teeth, which would have hurt immensely, to made it tickle instead. And other than that, I was perfectly stable and in my right oh, mind. Oh no! Yeah, you gotta do some real whippets. Oh yo! Oh, yeah. oh my god! I have a fucking whippet story. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ready whippets. Ready whippets. Oh god. All right. So like one time, me and Paul were like doing a lot, a lot of acid, right? And uh, our our friend Micah, our 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 friend Micah, oh, no. God rest his freaking soul. Uh, yeah. Poor bastard. Yeah. Poor. Yeah. Uh, damn. Any, anyway. 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 So. He just kept Fast fucking driving. Forward. He was driving past uh, uh, the house that we were just like tripping balls in, just honking the horn, blared freaking music with our buddy fucking Justin Gonzalez, right? And uh, he would just fucking go around the block, drink a little bit more, come back, honk, 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 <laughs> and then he did it like a he did it like a couple more times, and then he finally parked in the fucking parking lot. And the first thing our, our buddy Garrett did was punch him in the fucking head. Punch him in the face, dude. <laughs> punch him in the face. And he goes, I, and, and Micah is fucking annihilated. And so is our buddy Justin. Hold on. I come in peace. <laughs> he goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I come in peace. I come in peace. <laughs> And, and Garrett's like, fuck, just don't do that shit any fucking more. My mom's going to yell, going to get mad at me. And so, like, the next thing we know, he just, like, comes in there, and he's just screaming, fuck the world, uh, at the, up at the top of his lungs, and just, like, randomly humping everyone and going, ready whippets, ready whippets, ready whippets, and just, ready fucking, just like, doing the this. The Tostitos. Like... Oh. No, tostitos. no, they were, they were, they were the Don, they were Donya something. It was a specific brand of tortilla chips. But remember... Remember, he he grabbed the chips and fucking ripped the bag open and threw every goddamn chip in this jumbo <laughs> family size bag of like Tostitos. They go everywhere. We start spitting on the floor, and just then, going. <laughs> and then we start spitting on each other. We start which spitting on each <laughs> other <laughs> and fucking each of them. Hold on, I can't believe I forgot that shit. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got in a fucking like we grabbed this bo box of Chex Mix, uh, Life Mix, and we just started started doing fucking how like handfuls. Oh of my them, god! And yeah. just like just <laughs> yes. spitting on each other, yes. saying "fuck you, <laughs> fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, all right. Dude, that's Paul, go ahead and finish your your story, and then we'll get to Rob, and then we'll wrap up. Is that is that like a good like? I... A, Stack. I don't even remember. Well, I don't even we remember were, what my story was because we, we got we, were, we got so we many of them. Oh, the oh, acid yeah. stories. The oh god. The, uh, the the I thought Mo killed my brother. Uh, they were tripping balls and playing Magic the Gathering. Right. This is that same night, actually. Yeah, this is the same night as the Ready with This night. is that same night <laughs> because as Ready we did night. way too much acid. Way too much acid. This dude. I'm just named Squash, and that he's not even the only I met in my life who did a lot of drugs and was named after a food. Because I knew a guy named Fish, 
and I knew a guy named Cheese. So wow, it's only fitting. Uh, so squash. He brought down a bunch of acid. My brother bought a bunch of it, and it was big old sweet tarts. And we didn't know at the time, right, when we were eating too many of them to begin with, that they were double dips. So they had a drop on one side and a drop on the other. And uh, we ate like seven or eight of them just for fun. And then as the night went on and we had the black light and the and all the, the crazy colorful stuff, you know, each hit was in this little fluorescent blue bag and so we were searching for them they were like little easter eggs and we were eating them eating them eating them and uh i'm sitting out on the front porch of the house mo's in the back in the garage with my brother they're playing magic i'm hanging out with this other dude all of a sudden mo comes out from the from the backyard and he's like rubbing his face he looks agitated he sounds like he's he's not happy about something and I'm like, Mo, what's going on, man? Let's get no, no, I'm good, I'm good, dude. It's it's fine, it's fine. You know, uh, come on, let's just let's just smoke a cigarette. Let's just let's just hang out in the house or something. You know, come on, let's go. I'm like, where's where's Marcus? Where's my brother? He's like, he he's in the garage. He's fine, man. It's it's cool, it's cool. Come on, let's can we just go do something? Come on. Yeah, and like well, I'm me, suspicious. Me, yeah, let, let me give you some context real quick. The acid fucking hit me like because like like I said, we didn't know that it was double dip, right? And so I've been telling this story for fucking years, and uh, <laughs> like when I was talking to, to Paul, like the day, like the uh, like uh, during my break at work, that's when he let me know that no, it was double dipped, right? <laughs> so I thought I only did like five, six uh, freaking hits of acid. <laughs> so, well, th that was just like one at a time because I would do yeah. this number. Well, because remember my... we did the liquid drops too. Yeah. Yeah, see, I didn't know that, and so I did a lot more. I did twice the amount that I always thought I did. So that that fucking like weirded me out the fr when when I uh, uh, realized that. But let, let, <laughs> yeah, give me, let me give you some. Up. Oh God, beyond. Uh, uh, anyway, so yada yada yada. I, I'm I'm going up to Paul. I was like, you know, let's just have a smoke or something. And it's because like it all fucking hit me like way way too hard. And I wasn't really expecting it, and I was I didn't know how to deal with that, so I was just like I was on the cusp of having a really really bad trip. So anyway, go ahead. So, so <laughs> this night, the night seemed so long. Like we could go on. Like we could do a, a movie of just that one night. Oh God, um, yeah. The uh, the which part were we at? Uh, oh yeah, so you you come out the front, you look a mess, you look you look agitated, you look like shit has gone wrong in a big way, and uh, you know obviously I'm I'm concerned. Where's my brother? And you're like, no no, he's fine. And I'm like, fuck this. So I go to the back, I go to this garage, I I, I open this door, and here's my brother laying on the floor on his back, and the. The table looks like they were playing Magic the Gathering, but it looks like some of the cards scattered angrily. <laughs> and there's the strobe light going and the black lights on and Pink Floyd is playing on the on the stereo. And I'm like, Marcus, are you okay? And I for a split second I thought he wasn't, and then I hear And, uh, see, he fucking so, dealt with that just fine. Like I didn't. <laughs> so, Mo, I, I, I'm like, oh, okay. Mo didn't murder Marcus. Marcus went completely cuckoo. And Mo's like, yeah, dude, I was playing with a black guy, and like, you know, there were like all the skeletons and like rats and stuff, and I just started like, I started seeing it move around. I just, I had to get out of there, man. <laughs> oh, dude, like, uh, see, here, here's the part that I didn't tell him at the time, right? Uh, see, me and my buddy, we, who were, I was playing Mad MTG with, we were just sitting there just, like, laughing and giggling and smoking cigarettes, and then all of a sudden, we just stopped. Because uh, <laughs> the, the, the cards 
started fucking vibrating and flipping, right? Like, you know, like how you see stuff like in movies, uh, like a jostle and, and fuck about when there's an <laughs> earthquake? Well, that's what it looked like while I was playing MTG, except the, the flipping started turning into particles, into atoms and stuff. And then, <laughs> so I believe I had a moment where I was able to touch the center of the universe and because I, 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 I absolved myself into the force for a minute and I was able to see shit and, and then just everything was great. But something fucking like slapped me down hard back into my body, right? Because I guess I was just astral projecting too much or something. <laughs> and uh, I fucking and then all of a sudden I hear uh, I hear like Pink Floyd or something go off in the background. And then that's like when, oh, oh boy, this is a lot of shit. Oh God, this is getting a little, <laughs> things are getting a little bit too real around here. And that, that's that's when I started having the bad trip. That's when I uh, saw my uh, found Paul. Anyway, so <laughs> c continue, buddy. Yeah. So we 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 hit that milestone on the night, right? So I decide, okay, cool, I'm good to go hang out with Mo. Um, you and me, we go back around the front, uh, we're smoking cigarettes and all of a sudden my brother comes barreling out of the back, you know, cause he had this tendency, uh, <laughs> when we would get fucked up to, he, he would go hard and then he would crash and he would think the night was over. And just about the time that you were starting to feel like you wanted to wind down and everything to go back to normal and maybe go to bed. That's when he wakes up. And he's ready to fuck shit up again. <laughs> Only now he has gotten some rest, but he is still fucked up. So it's kind of like people that were drinking four locos or people that mix Red Bull and, and vodka or oh, you know what I mean? God. Mix energy yeah, drinks yeah. with alcohol. Yeah. That's the worst fucking combination. Cause you get the belligerent fucking uh I'll fuck kick your fucking ass, fuck bitch, mixed with the uh I can do anything. I can see the future. I can see the past. I am the Wadib. Uh, I am. I am. I am all things at once. I will not fear. Fear is a mind killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that was that was that night. And that was one fucking night, Mo. We we. I can't believe we survived. Oh, dude, I, I'm surprised I'm still alive today. Like, I, I'm surprised, like, during my 40th birthday that I just didn't suddenly have, like, a brain aneurysm and die because that would, be, <laughs> that would just be the height of irony because I told myself there's no fucking way I'm getting to 40. No way. <laughs> like, I didn't even think I'd make it to 35. Like, when I, was when I turned 33, I was, like, legit surprised. Yeah, it's like, whoa, I'm, I'm outliving Jesus. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I outlived Kurt Cobain, the Big Bopper. You know, I, yeah. uh, you know, I, I outlived a lot of people. But anyway. Yeah. Oh my God. Speaking of drugs, oh, wait a minute. So I heard a recording uh -huh. of Kurt Cobain singing without like the music behind it. It's just Kurt Cobain like singing the lyrics to a song. Holy shit! He was fucked up as hell. Like, oh my God. Yes, he was. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> oh yeah, because yeah. he was an on again, off again heroin addict. Like yeah. you can't tell when there's like a rock and instrumental behind it, but he sounds like he's like on all of the drugs all of the time. <laughs> well, he have you he, seen the uh, have you seen the video of puddle of mud covering about a girl? <laughs> uh, no, no, <laughs> I, I, dude, I fucking hate muddle of pud. <laughs> Ugh. Disgusting, disgusting. All right, uh, 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 Robin, uh, uh, what, do you have a story for us? Well, I mean, a lot of my drug use is not, well, my uh, alleged drug use, what hypothetically alleged drug use, alleged. yeah. Um, I apologize. Isn't, isn't really the kind of, like, party drug use. It's just, like, you know, take take some Vicodin and then, like, chill out in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. So, so like you wouldn't say that you like you know took some Vikes and like tore across town, you know, like shooting a Tommy gun, saying I can conquer the world or anything like that. Definitely not. 
Oh, it's, man. it's just like, I'm going to sit in my room and nod off. <laughs> the day is young, Robin. Only time will tell. I mean, also, like, I mean, I also, you know, I, you know, robo tripping is fun. I like robo tripping. Oh, yeah. Oh man, yeah. robo tripping like you know that that stuff trips me out a little because you gotta guzzle down a lot of freaking robo testing and didn't hey, they, like not take... if not if you take pills. Yeah, not if you yeah not if you do it the right way. If you do it the right way, you can you can get the you can get the tabs that are just the dextromethorphan. Yep. And woo. Oh. Man. And then they have a uh, robo cough. It's what it's the big one now, which is just so like it's it's a bottle the size of like a five hour energy shot. And it's 450 milligrams of just dextromethorphan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good God. And so you just take a five-hour energy shot, and then you're just fucking gone. Like. All right. Well, we're at 12 o'clock right now. I believe you probably have somewhere to be, right? Yeah, I'm going to have to go to work in a bit. All right. Essential all right. employees. No, yeah. no shit, I'm, right? I'm part of that team, brother. I'll be at work uh, tomorrow. And then I almost got laid off yesterday, too. So That yeah. sucks. Because they're the... still trying to sell the place. Oh, they're still trying to sell in, in the middle of this freaking pandemic? Yeah, and they almost had a buyer, but apparently they, they backed out. And, but it was, like, so close that, like, I was, like, it, it, you know, there was the, like, be prepared kind of talk. Oh, damn. All right. Well, let's go ahead and end here. Uh, Riley, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at Riley Tweets. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Riley Streams, where I stream such great games as Kingdom Hearts and Sonic Mania. Beautiful titles. Um, you could find Pokemon Variety Hour on Stitcher, Spotify, and, or Apple Podcasts, but most importantly, on those same three places, you could find the Riley Podcast Mega Feed. Wow. With the shows that I do, such as Largest Issue in the Galaxy. The Riley Movie Review Podcast, and most recently, while we were recording this, uploaded while we were recording this, the Dickheads Podcast Season 4! I would skip the first episode. Just wait for two. <laughs> episode 2 is going to be good. Episode 2 is probably going to contain 100% less N-words and 100% more. I, I don't know, man. I, I just, I, I don't <laughs> see, I do not see that happening. I, I think hey. maybe like seventy five percent lot. I get there's no way. <laughs> if you need a if you need the kind of podcast that you can pump out half a can of cream cauliflower, you just keep pumping and pumping and listen to the podcast he just advertised. The Dickheads maybe, podcast even cool. Dickheads podcast will have you erect and pumping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like you take a it's like you've taken a bunch of Zoloft. Oh my God. Pumping, pumping, and pumping. And you'll never come. <laughs> Robin, where can they find you at? <laughs> you can go to twitter.com slash inside alloy at inside alloy. And uh, I stream on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash inside alloy. All right. Paul, do you have anything you want to hawk besides your just. Disgusting degeneracy. <laughs> Most of the, day, the American people deserve access to. Yeah, you you cut off at the the point that it was going to be a joke. Mister Diggity, I do not find you humorous. Yeah, well, at least uh, I ain't freaking endorse Joe Biden. Hey, anyway. well, I love I you. Think I want to make college education. I officially endorse Joseph Biden for president. In 2020, uh, I officially reluctantly will vote for Joe Biden in 2020. Uh, and I officially am telling you guys to go to twitch.tv slash mo diggity. Uh, YouTube. Don't forget to sign up at fadegrips.store. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I forgot that this is your time to hawk your shit. Okay, Come to twitch.tv slash mo diggity. Uh huh. Uh, subscribe to the stream. We're trying to hit it. Patreon.com slash most side productions slash most side productions. Don't forget to buy a t shirt with our logo. Uh -huh. uh, we'll be coming out with Mo new scented video. candles. You'll be getting, you'll be able to get the, uh, you'll be able to get a candle that's called This Is What My Ass Smells Like. Um, <laughs> we're actually you know, taking real enough, samples you know. from Mo. Yeah, because um, this is what my ass smells like in candles. Yeah, fun fact. 
the uh, the compounds that your your anus produces that give it that delicious hot dog smell. Uh, mm. Those are actually those are actually uh, uh, fat soluble, so you can make them into a scented candle. So we will be coming out with uh, scented Moe's ass candles. So if you've ever wanted to know what it smells like to have Mo sit for 16 unwashed hours in a chair in your room, you can experience it firsthand. I mean, I've gotten better, but you know, like, but anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All, all, all the shit will be in the fucking, all, all the links will be in the description down below. So thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate it. And until next time, Ta-ta. Love you, Bye. Mama.